that's good. Well, first, um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Ryan Rossi. I'm the event supervisor for uh, Water Rockets. Um, I've been doing this for a long time since I was in uh, since I was in it as a fourth grader, and I'm 28 now. So, um, been doing it a long time, and excited for another year. So today, we're just going to kind of go through uh, everything that you need to know. We'll go through the rules, explain some rules. Um, it'll be pretty quick because there's not a ton of rules. Um, we want to really encourage freedom, um, especially for the kids to kind of experiment with what works and what doesn't. Um, I'll give some tips towards the end. And then at the end, I can answer any questions that you might have about any part of the event as far as um, you know practices, as far as construction, as far as how the actual day of the event, um, as far as the day of the event goes. Um, so we'll start going over the rules. Um, and we'll start with construction. So this event on event day is pretty quick. Um, the kids get to do it all. You know, there's no parent involvement outside of just dropping them off and getting them checked in. Um, but most of the event happens beforehand, right? Um, so building a water bottle rocket. And I have the rules over here. Um, so if I'm looking down and I'm not distracted, I'm, I'm reading off the rules. I haven't printed out. So um, just wanted to go through the main ones. It's um, every year a new rocket has to be designed. So um, the school name, number, all that has to be on the bottle. Um, so you're making this out of a two liter bottle and there's a lot of freedom that goes with that. There's no height requirements. You can take multiple two liter bottles and combine them together. The biggest rule is you can't change anything to that original two liter bottle, that pressure vessel, um, because it has to be able to hold the water and it has to be able to hold the air, which makes it launch off it. So you can add whatever you want to that bottle. You just can't actually like put a hole in that bottle. You can't, um, you can use all sorts of glues, you know, liquid nails, all those things to attach things to it. You can attach other pieces of plastic to it to make it taller, um, attach nose cones, whatever you want to do, attach it to it, but you can't actually just, you can't like put holes in that original two liter bottle. Um, put your school name number on that. That's all pretty simple. We've had rockets get lost in the past and we always want to make sure that they get back to uh, where they need to go if somebody leaves them somewhere. Um, so that's a pretty easy one. Um, the bottle has to be clear. So you're using two liter bottles that are clear. The reason for that is we change it every, every year. So one year will be green, one year will be clear, just so we're not seeing the same bottles used in back-to-back -back years. Like if somebody wins with the great rocket, we're not seeing that team just bring the very same rocket the next year, right? It has to be, um, has to be different colors multiple times and some other different requirements every year uh, that helps us do that. Um, all other items, they can be attached to the rocket, um, fins, parachutes, nose cones, whatever that the kids come up with to make the best thing possible. Uh, the purpose of the event is to get the longest time in the air. So it's not about, it's not always about how high it goes, um, but that does help you stay in the air longer. Um, for construction, you can't buy um, like model rocket parts and stick them on. Like you can't buy a parachute for a model rocket and put it in your water bottle rocket. Everything has to be made. Um, you, own, you can buy like the materials to make it, but you can't buy finished rocket parts. Um, that's, we we'll kind of, we don't want that to happen. We want the kids to be able to be creative and come up with their own things. So you can't go buy a model rocket and say, okay, we're going to take the wings off this rocket, stick it on our two liter, two liter and call it good. Um, do, do, do. what else is important um at the bottom of the bottle where like where you would pour the the pop or something out of um nothing can go below two inches from the bottom of that the reason for that is it will not fit on our launcher so if you have the rule sheet um in front of you if you don't have the rule sheet they're on the macomb science olympiad a website underwater battle rockets um, if there's a little diagram that will explain that if something goes below that two inch line from the bottom, um, it will not be able to launch. It will, it won't fit on the launcher on launch day. Um, so we want to make sure that something that happens almost every single year where we put a rocket on the launch pad and we can't shoot it off because we can't get it to fit. And then the kids have to make their adjustments there. And, um, it's, it's tougher on the kids. So we want to make sure we always talk about that one because it's something that we run into every single year. So at the bottom of the rocket, two inches below, um, yeah, uh, so actually, yep, two inches below, um, you don't have anything that goes past that. Um, 
we provide all the water and stuff so you don't bring your you don't bring your own that day um we provide the air so that's something that you guys don't have to worry about every bottle is 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 pressurized to the same air pressure um at 70 or 75 uh, psi um in, in both of our launchers it's an auto set governor that we can't go past and it allows us to um you know make sure everybody has that even even playing field when it comes to the competition um every part you can have multiple parts of your rocket just in the launch they have to stay together so if you have a nose cone and you want that nose cone to fall off it has to be attached to your rocket um how the scoring on competition day goes is say you launch a rocket and it goes up and a wing falls off or a nose cone falls off and we stop the time as soon as the first piece hits the ground and any rocket that does not stay fully together drops into the bottom bracket. So you can have a two minute launch, but the nose cone fell off, you know, five seconds in and it hit the ground, that would become automatically below any rocket that stayed together. Um, so they can separate, but they have to still be attached to each other. So a lot of times nose cones will be attached with um, with a string, with a lanyard, um, you know, a cord, something that keeps everything together during the flight of the uh, rocket. Um, day of the competition, you guys have to have uh, safety goggles. That's one thing that we always say. We have a few pairs there, but we strongly encourage you to bring your own just because we don't always have access to them. Say a kid walks off with the pair that we lent out. So we want to make sure each team brings their own um, or else they won't be able to launch their rocket, right? We want to be able to um, make sure the kids are the ones that get to press that fancy red button to make the rocket shoot off. And um, if they don't have safety goggles on that day, uh, they won't be able to do that. We'll have to launch it for them. And again, this event is 100% about the kids. Um, that's one thing that we want to focus on. We want to make it fun for them. I've always said this isn't A is for anatomy. This isn't your heavy, heavy, heavy study um, competitions. This is meant to be fun. You know, a lot of the times the, the best launches are the one that goes straight up and just comes straight down. And, and that kid will, you know, we've, we've seen rockets go through like sunroofs of cars there in the parking lot. And uh, the kids sit there laughing, even though they didn't get too much of a good time. So we want to make sure it's fun for the kids. And that starts with being prepared so they can have fun that day. Um, uh, we have all the stuff. So on the day of the competition, they walk up. They check in their rocket with uh, with our team there. Um, we go through the checklist, which is all the construction rules. Um, and then we go from there. They go get their water and then they go do two launches and they, the, the highest time in the air wins. Um, 75 PSI, um, and that's pretty much it. We have timers on that day. We have three timers on each launcher and the middle time, our average time is the winner. We are always pretty good with that. Our timers are great every single year. Um, and we write it down and the highest time in the air wins. So scoring, again, that's the thing that we look for on the scoring of that day is did the rocket stay together? How long was in the air? Were there any construction violations, right? If there's construction violations, we don't launch the rocket. Um, we give the kids an opportunity to fix what happened or what went wrong in that time. Um, but outside of that, that is pretty much the competition. A um, couple more construction points, no glass, no metal. Uh, the only metal that is allowed to be used is um, little the little fish hooks. Um, snap swivels a lot of teams use those on their parachutes those are okay but any other uh, metal is not allowed on the rocket um, no extremely sharp nose cones so uh, you know we've seen it before where we've had to have teams dull out their nose cone because it came to a point it has to be a rounded you know rounded top so it does not um, become a danger to anybody we don't want anybody getting hit out there where it can cause any safety issues um to do any other thing the the biggest rule it's not even listed on the um on the rules and this one i want to make sure everybody's paying attention for because it is the one that we have the biggest issue every single year particularly this past year um this is an event for the kids um this is happens every year and it it frustrates us it makes us sad because you know we'll we'll walk up there and we ask the kids questions about their rockets and they have no idea 
how the rocket even works. Um, you know, a parent takes it home to their work and they build the whole thing, they ship it out and they say, go try to win with this. And, um, you know, this is an event about the kids. It's about the kids. And we're pretty strict on that all the way through. Like if we're asking kids what they do and they can't give us an answer about how their rocket is, you know, you guys, it, it's tough to say, like, we, we know when the parents do it, when the kids don't do it. Um, and it also is important for the kids to understand, you know, how everything works, because if something goes wrong on launch day, parents are not involved. If they have to make adjustments or fix something, um, they have to sit there inside of the area where parents are not allowed and our coaches are not allowed and they have to fix things by themselves. If their parachute becomes, you know, if, if it's a windy day and the parachute opens up on the launch pad, they have to be able to pack it themselves. Right. Um, and we ask them to do that stuff. Like when they will check in, they'll be opening up the parachute um, and things like that and, and repacking it for us. So we know that they, that they did it. Um, so I'm asking you guys just be hands off, like let the kids come up with great things. They come up with great things every year. Um, your job isn't to give them ideas. Your job is to help them execute their ideas, regardless of how crazy that they are. Um, Cause we've seen some crazy stuff over the years. Um, and it's not, it, the point of this event is to allow kids to have the creative freedom to come up with things and uh, figure out how it all works. Um, and that kind of leads me into the next part. So practicing for this, it's always the toughest, but uh, as coaches, um, a lot of schools have a water bottle rocket launcher um, that they are able to practice on. And if, um, if they don't, there's a ton of options on Amazon. There's a ton of homemade options that you can find online. I know in the past couple of years, we've posted links um, for the school. And a lot of times your school will buy those for the uh, organization. They're not that expensive. I know a uh, team last year and the year before found one on Amazon for, I think, $40. So if your team does not have a way to practice it right now, uh, definitely check out those options because um, it is not a, it's not a complicated uh, machine and um, there's a ton of internet options and we know we have some parents and some coaches who are pretty hands-on and, and know how to make things and I know when I was in it with the kid my dad built ours for our school um, the way that we were able to practice it um, so uh, talk to your uh, your head coaches of, uh, of the school and they will be able to give you an answer on if they are um, if they have something and if they don't have something I'll definitely ask them if the school will provide that for the kids. And there's a ton of options. And and I know my email address and things like that, and my contact information are on the website as well. Um, reach out and ask me if it's a good model. Like I'll be able to give you um, give you any idea um, if it's a good or which one I would recommend. Because there's a lot out there. There's some that are complicated and more expensive. It's really a basic thing. So um, if you need something like that, don't hesitate to reach out and definitely talk to your head coaches. Um, I'll give you guys some tips about what is successful and what isn't. Um, this is an outdoor event. Weather plays a factor every single year. Um, it could be windy in the morning, rainy in the afternoon. It has snowed on us before. Um, so my biggest piece of advice when building a water bottle rocket is to make it sturdy. Um, you don't want to use like a piece of paper for your nose cone, right? You don't want to use cardboard, uh, you know, a, a construction paper on your rocket. You want to make something that is going to be sturdy in, in the weather, right? You don't want to make something too heavy, but you also don't want to make something too light where, you know, the wind is just going to blow it around. Um, a lot of the times what happens is if we see a rocket that's built, um, you know, out of with like a paper nose cone or something like that, um, it's tough to launch because as soon as it gets any type of speed or propulsion on it, um, it kind of falls apart and the nose cone falls off right away and it, it struggles. So when the kids are building this, you know, encourage them to use sturdy materials, you know, foam board instead of maybe cardboard, like things like that. Um, there's solutions all over the place, but definitely make it where, you know, a breezy day in the spring isn't going to derail the entire launch because that is something that we see every year. Like, if it's raining that day and it's spitting when the kids are launching, you know, paper is going to soak up that water. So um, plan for the plan for the weather because it affects it every year. Even on a bright sunny day, there's going to be some wind. We've had times when it hailed on us. So it gets kind of crazy every year because you never know what to expect in Michigan in the spring. But we've also had 85 degree days where it was beautiful all day. Um, the weather changes throughout the day, too. 
Um, so make sure that that rocket is built sturdy. Um, you, again, this is all about, you know, weight to height to how much water you put in it to get the highest outcome. But a lot of the times too, you want to build something that is going to be able to cut through air rather than the air kind of blow it around. So um, another thing that I always like to highlight at the event training thing, um, there are a, an abundance of resources online. Um, if you check out our Science Olympiad page, there are event training videos from the past. Um, there are multiple different YouTube videos about how it all works. There are um, design pictures from years past. Um, there's a million and a half ideas on it. But one thing I always see, and this happens every year, um, there's a ton of videos where you'll see a team build a parachute. And in the middle of their parachute, they put a hole. Um, that gets teams kind of confused every year. In those videos that you're seeing, the hole is so they don't lose their rocket. So the parachute is working, they know it's working, and it's not you know, getting taken off into a jet stream or something where it doesn't come back. Um, that on the competition day, we've seen holes every year. I always like to give a hint. Think about why that hole is there. Think about why um, it could cause a problem because it is something that is in a lot of videos online. A lot of that's for practice. So um, if if you have, you know, we hear the story every year, team lost their rocket the night before. They were fine tuning things to see how it goes. They had to rebuild one all in the night before. Um, so that is a good idea for training purposes, especially if you are practicing, you know, once a week and you're shooting off your rocket, you know, putting a hole in that parachute for practice is great, not necessarily great for the competition. Um, but outside of that, I'll open it up to questions. I just, again, want to stress that this is a event for the kids, right? This is an event where there will be parents who are engineers who take it to work and they draw up this great thing. And then when they come here, the kids are like, oh, yeah, that's cool. It worked. Um, but then, then, you know, they might win a medal or something. But then there's kids who create something themselves and it absolutely just explodes and it goes poorly. And they think it's the coolest thing in the world because it's something that they made. So uh, we want the kids to have fun. And we want this to be from the kids by the kids. Um, so I will open it up to questions now. Um, if you have any questions, um, anything, you can ask about construction, ideas, you can ask about the competition that day, anything that I might have missed going over the rules, um, you guys can ask those questions now. All right, so it looks like Keegan has a question. Yeah, just real quick. So you said that um, there's no limit on the number of bottles you can use, but is it just the main one that you can't alter in any way? So if you use another one, can you put holes in that one? Absolutely. So that's, okay. yeah. So if you, like a lot of times what we see is you'll have the main bottle and then teams will decide how big they want to build their rocket. And when they build the rocket, what they'll do is they'll cut you know, the top and bottom off another rocket and it creates like a sleeve, like a cylinder that slides onto the main one. You can do whatever you want to those parts. As long as you don't change anything about the original bottle where it's gonna affect its ability to hold the air. Um, so yeah, if you build four bottles on top of one another, you can put holes in all those other bottles. You just can't put holes in the one that has to hold the water in the air. Got it, thank you. Yep. Michael has got a question. Yeah, um, have I? I was having audio issues at the beginning. Um, I it's a clear bottle this year, right? It is a clear bottle. Yes. Okay, and have the um, practice times have those been decided yet on um, a tentative schedule for the first practices? Um, there is practice events, um, but practices for your. Um, we we do at times ha hold like practice things if we get enough interest. And how we've always done that in the past is on the Science Olympiad website. There is um, sorry if you guys hear my dog barking. He's he's away, but he's being annoying. Um, if you go uh, put out like on the Science Olympiad website, there's like a uh, there's like a chat box where you'll be able to kind of put in your information. Um, or reach out to somebody. And what happens is if a couple of teams want to hold a practice event with our launchers, um, we can we usually get that organized with that. But your individual team practices, those are, you know, those are set by you and your head coach of your team. Um, we do have practice tournaments, and I believe that schedule 
is still being finalized as of a couple of days ago. I had gotten a few emails about possible dates that are moving. I know some of them are set. Um, all that information is on the website about when our practice tournaments are as well. Okay, thanks. Yep, in the main event, um, I just saw one in the chat pop up. The main events, let me go to the website here for the elementary. It is, I don't know if everything has been finalized yet. Yes, the Macomb tournament is, the schedule is on Saturday, May 13th is the um, the big one at Macomb uh, for all of the area. Um, that one, it looks like if you go to the Science Olympiad website, um, you can, um, Science Olympiad website, yeah, it looks like everything is finalized on that as far as like even the event schedule. Uh, the event schedules are still being determined, but all of the other stuff is finalized, the dates and kind of tentative times. So all that information is on the event website. Any other questions? So I uh, see in the chat, liquid nails is being asked about. Um, I've always liked wick liquid nails. Um, we've had at times, we have changed the rules back, you know, four or five years ago. Um, we were not allowing hot glue to be used or super glue to be used. Um, those rules have changed. We now allow all those rules to be used. I like liquid nails because it allows for the, I've always said it allows a little bit more flex. So when the air goes in, um, it kind of doesn't. So I've always been a big, um, big liquid nails fan when it came to this. Um, but as long as you'll be fine if you use hot glue or something like that, as long as you're not holding the hot glue onto the bottle where it melts that bottle, like as long as you don't melt the bottle. So if you're putting dabs here, dabs there, you'll be fine. But as long as you don't melt or affect that bottle, um, it, it should not be a problem. But that, I mean, if you hold anything hot against a two-liter plastic for an expanded amount of time, you could damage it a little bit. Um, but we haven't had any issues ever since we changed that rule. But I like liquid nails just because I think it, it works really, really well, especially depending on the type of wings you want to use. Um, so if you're using maybe a thinner wing, maybe something that can allow a little bit more flex, maybe if it's a little bit more stiffer, is helpful. Um, so yeah, liquid nails I like definitely something that we see a lot of, but you can use whatever glue that um, that you decide on. Any other questions? All right, then. Um, so we can get done a little bit early and we still had seven more minutes. Um, so if you come up with a question, um, you know, my information is on the Science Olympiad website. I can, uh, I'll put it in the chat right now if you want to. Uh, we got somebody's raising their hand. Um, where is it? Thank you. Yeah, this is James Dad. Uh, we just want to check on like how the groups and then the coach coach would be decided. Is it within the team or? Yes. Decide? So so the the individual teams, um, our team size is you know I, the best way that we've always seen done is um, groups of three, and those are decided by um, your head coach usually of your school. Um, so what we always see is, you know, a pretty fair way to see and what we've heard from other teams that they do a lot of is what they'll do is they'll have three kids on the team. Each kid designs and creates their own rocket. Um, the, the coach of water rockets there helps them execute those ideas. Um, and then through testing those rockets, the team decides which one is the two best because on their launch day, you get two launches. Um, and the best one will count, of course, um, but you get to launch twice. Um, and you get, so you can have four rockets and you can decide which two to launch. You can have three and decide which two to launch. But a good system that uh, we, we recommend is, you know, three kids on a team, each kid makes a 
bracket and the team then decides from those three which would go so um those are questions for your head coach as far as you know which kids are on those teams and uh things like that uh can you launch two different rockets absolutely we've seen um we have seen teams bring five rockets to the event um and just in case something went wrong and they wanted to make maybe they had a rocket that would do better on a windy day and they decided on that day to launch the one that they thought would be best in windy conditions um but yeah you can bring two rockets we recommend two rockets because uh sometimes we lose rockets sometimes they get damaged um so yeah definitely you can bring as many as you want um as long as you're, you get two launches so you can launch the same rocket twice if one has a really good launch you can launch two different rockets um and uh what we have done in the past is say you are a team who has three kids and they each make a rocket that kid that um that does not have did not get a chance to launch their rocket we usually let them let them come back and launch it just doesn't count um but if they want to see it go up usually towards the end of the day we have some time where we have been able to uh, let them come back and launch it's rare um, because most teams are set on what they want to do but sometimes if a kid wants to get a practice one in and then if we have the stuff there and we, we have some time we usually allow them uh just the main part needs to be clear yep just the main part with the hole in the bottle needs to needs to be clear uh clear color two liter soda pop use the hold water and pressurize has to be clear um everything else like we always tell the kids to like have fun with it we see some cool designs on rockets you'll see some kids paint them you'll see some kids you know add designs to the wing that's all perfectly fine uh just the the main bottle has to be clear and I see somebody comment about not modifying it. Um, yeah, don't modify that main bottle. You can add things to it, but there's been times before when we have, like, I'll be honest, we have missed somebody who made a modification to that bottle. They sanded it down with a sander before adding something to it. And um, I went to pressurize it and it exploded and like they had wood on it, wood splittered everywhere. It was pretty loud. And uh, so, yeah, that's what will happen if there is, if that bottle is, shave down that's what will happen if it's been um altered if anything like that you risk of it just exploding on the launch pad um which is it looks cool but it's dangerous we want to keep our kids safe um so that's that's part of the reason for that rule um but outside of that you have all the options to do um whatever you want as long as you don't mess with that ability to hold water So I will put my email in the chat box. So if you have any additional questions to ask me, you can reach out through email and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, as well as like, if you have questions, if your school does not have a, if your school does not have a launcher and you are looking into building one or looking into buying one, I can uh, help direct you into like which way to go if you have some options. There is a ton of stuff out on the internet. And again, uh, before we we leave today, um, just remember this is about the kids for the kids. Let them do great things because uh, they will come up with really, really cool ideas. Like if they come up with some crazy idea where they want to have three parachutes on the rocket, like we've seen it work. We've seen it work. Um, just your job is to help them execute their crazy ideas. So. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to stick around. Uh, you can email me, but if if not, uh, we can kind of wrap this up. You are good to go. And uh, thank you guys again for coming. I think it uh, helps a lot. So.